Good afternoon and welcome to the Douglas County Racial and Ethnic Disparities, also known as Red Virtual Conference. My name is LaDonna Jones Dunlap and I am one of the co-chairs of the Racial and Ethnic Disparities Subcommittee. Before we begin, I'd like to give a special thank you to the separate juvenile court of Douglas County, Nebraska, the Honorable Vernon Daniels, CEO and President of the Urban League of Nebraska, Mr. Thomas Warren Sr., and Douglas County Commissioner Chris Rogers. These individuals continue to provide unwavering support for our RED efforts. An additional thank you to the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association for the partnership in making this virtual platform possible. Before we move into housekeeping items, the RED team would like to know who's joining us today. And as always, appreciate you taking the time to join us over the noon hour. Before I introduce our presenter today, there are a few house housekeeping items. All participants have been placed on mute. If you have questions for our presenter, please enter it into the chat box. We will monitor questions as they come in and get to as many as time permits at the end of this presentation. For purposes of CEUs, if you are viewing this presentation in a room with others, please make sure to type your name and email address into the chat box to receive your certificate. Certificates will be mailed out later this week. As a reminder, at the end of this presentation, during the closing remarks, we ask you complete a brief survey about the presentation. Your input is valuable to us, and we thank you in advance for completing it. Our presenter today is Rosie Tu. Rosie is a refugee advocate with Heartland Family Service. Rosie has been with Heartland Family Service for four and a half years. Prior to joining Heartland Family Service, Rosie was a bilingual community liaison with Omaha Public Schools for seven years. She is also a graduate from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Rosie is a refugee from Thailand refugee camp. She is Corinne and originally from Myanmar, also known as Burma. She has been in the United States for 13 years. Rosa would like you all to know she loves serving her refugee community. Thank you for being with us today, Rosie. Good morning. My name is Rosie. Um, Ladonna has already introduced me to you, so I was just gonna go straight and say or the survey that I provide um, through, um, for our refugee community. Um, let's just start with these three words. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm having a little hard time with technology and I'm trying to, um, my friends here is trying to help me out. It's like so. There you go, you should click. It's just on. Oh, here. Yeah. Um, the first one is um, um, you may already know these three words, um, but we're just gonna warm up a little bit since we are going to talking about like refugees. Um. Let's just start with immigration. A person, immigration is a person who comes to a country to take up permanent residence. And migrants, a person who move from frequently in order to find work, um, may or may not have legal status. And refugee, a person flees in his her own country because of the war, violence, persecution, or a well-found fear of persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, political uh, opinion, or membership in particularly social group. Um, and Nebraska is um, the middle of the U.S., where a lot of um, refugees all over the, like, the world come in and settle down here. Refugees from Su uh, Sudan, South Sudan, Bhutan, Somalia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Burma, also known as Myanmar, and other refugees. I, myself, a refugee from um, Thailand refugee camp. I'm an... I am originally from Burma. Um, my parents like um, are from Burma, but I have never been to Burma um, like until 2018. I was born in a refugee camp. Um, 
the civil war between um, our ethnic leaders and the government government started in 1948, leading us um, Korean people. They were like trying to kill Korean people. So my parents used to tell us a story. They were no, they were not allowed to live in the village when they were young. They always have to um, escape from their village and hide in the jungle. Um, because the enemy got, going to enter in their village, burn down, and then killing, um, shooting, beating with um, foes to labor. They will rape, um, recruit the children, uh, what is soldier, um, to become, um, recruit the children to become a soldier and everything, so they were not safe. Um, while running, they will be mom separated by their whole family, and they only have to hide in the jungle. So they didn't get a proper education in the jungle. They didn't get like um, nutrition or medical um, supplies. Um, while keep on running, if you look at in the pictures um, to the right ones, this is how they were, were getting um, education. They were using um, a rock flag, a board, um, considered as a blackboard, and then this is how they were learning. Um, under the tree um, and then probably stay there for a couple of days and have to run again. Well, I'll keep on run, uh, running until they reach the borderline, uh, cross the river and become in the refugee camp, um, reach the neighborhood country called um, Thailand. And that time it was not only them, like a lot of people, like 100,000 of people reaching the borderline. So they have created a temporary camp um, in a refugee camp uh, supported by United Nations. So yeah, mom and mom and dad met, met each other in the camp. So I was born there. Um, you may think that the camp was safe because um, it is in Thailand. It was not in Burma or anything, but it was not safe. We got, we always get attacked during the summer. And as I remember, there was two major deadly attacks. And um, the first time when I was like five or six, um, that time they just came, the enemy just entered the camp and then burned down everything. Um, the next day we came back, all the house becoming ash, um, as you see in the pictures. The second time, um, after two to three years later, they came back again. And uh, this time they were not only burning, they were like come um, shootings, bombing, um, killing or everything. I remember that night I was running with my mom and the enemy caught us while we were running, asking us to stop running, otherwise they are going to shoot us. But every step that we made, they shot our a step trying to scare us. I mean, I think they did not mean to kill us. If, if they did, um, we would have died. It was so close. While reaching out into the mountain, we cannot run down the hill anymore. So moms kicked us down, me and my sister. She was holding and my brother, as you see in the middle of the pictures. Um, and then we got cut by the rocks. That time you were so scared, you don't feel any pain, you know? By the morning, it was like bleeding and everything. And the next morning when we came back, um, all the, our house was gone. Um, I was so happy as a kid, you know, my school got burned down. I did a, it was to work, um, the final. I did not have to study for my test. Um, so that was awesome. <laughs> It was not awesome, but as a kid, you know, you don't have to go to school. Um, you don't. And the other things like all your chica, chickens, like any house raised animal um, got burned. You get to eat the best meal ever, like meat, a lot of meat. So that was like, that was a bad time. Also, like in a bad time, um, there was a good memories, you know. Look at the picture into the left where people were like lining up, the children were lining up. I was one of them in the back. If you couldn't um, see me, and we were, we don't have to cook. Yeah, um, we were just lining up for the picture, um, for the foods and stuff. It was great. So as I mentioned, refugee camps was like often control, fence and patrol. Um, we are not allowed to travel outside of the camp. Um, we, Outside people are not allowed to travel into the camp too. Um, op op employment opportunities very limited. You, if you finish school, the school only went through 10th grade. If you need finish 10th grade, you can become a teacher or nurse. I don't want to be any of them. So education is going through for KG to 10th grade. Basically, 
and uh, the learning system is a little different from here. We are not allowed to share idea, um, opinion, or critical thinking. Um, no class discussion here. Um, it was just like the teacher is going to come into the room and write out everything, and you would note down everything. The next day, you will come back and memorize the whole package that uh, the teacher wrote down from yesterday. If you get it right, you get it right. If you did not get it right, you will get spanked. So I was like, I don't see my future in there. I asked my mom, why, why do I have to go to school? I want to sneak out of the camp and then work. Mom want me to um, have an education, able to read and write, but she couldn't really explain to me how education is very important um, because like she cannot give me example or anything. And it's like, as, as I mentioned, we are not allowed to ask questions. We are not allowed to share ideas and everything. My mom doesn't like it the way I asked. She was like, instead of giving me a reason, she was like, I am your mom, you are my daughter. You just do what I ask you to do. You are not going to question me anything. Well, okay. I Yes, I'm her daughter. I will have to do whatever she asked me to do, right? And the next one, healthcare. We have a clinic, we don't have a doctor, we don't have a medical, high tech medical equipment. So if, if you get headache, if you are sick, if you are severe sick or um, like stomach ache or anything, you will be given um, Tylenol. So Tylenol is the cure of the notion is that cure everything, you know. But for, ex for a, a woman that get pregnant, if they cannot have a baby, and they will be sent to the city, probably two to three hours to get to the city. If she can make it there, she will make it. If she does not make it, she does not make it. So, and water and food, we collect water from natural resources, community wealth, and food is we depend on outside assistance like UNHCR uh, support us. Rice and beans, salt, we will see that by the end of every month for like, as I remember, for 19 years in the camp, uh, I, re I received that every, every month. So every stay in the camp um, was like 15 to 20 years, three potential options for departure, um, repatriations, integration, and resettlement. Um, yes, in 2008, we got a chance to um, apply for um, to come here, resettlement. Um, first, you will have to verify your uh, refugee status. Means like you cannot just be there like a couple of years and then um, get to come here. You will have to be there like like a, more than like a little while. Um, I was born there, so I don't have a problem there. And if you don't believe me, there is the proof in the pictures, like a um, family that's sitting home number one, two, and three. That was like, that picture was taken when I was, six six months and the second one is like um in the bottom the two picture in the bottom so whole of the family that holding the number that was like um the left one was um, i was um after the second deadly attack uh, after my uh, my first camp got burned down um the third one is like we moved to the new camp because our old camp um got attacked and regularly we were not safe there so they moved up to the new camp yeah, um, you have to ver verify your status, um, refugee status, fill out the paperwork. My father secretly went to fill out the paperwork without uh, le letting my mom know because my mom doesn't want to come here, doesn't want to come to Western countries. She doesn't know, like, what would we do there? She, she was very scared. She wouldn't want to risk. And then the next step, we went to interview after our paper got approved, that time my father cannot hide it to us anymore because everybody has to be there, you know? And after the interview, moms was very scared, came back and I talked to me like, your father is going to Western country like America. I said, yes. Um, she was very scared. She was like, well, where is America and what is America and what do they do there? And if they have rice in there? And I was like, mom, I do not know. I have never been there. So like, I have no idea. And then we have to go through the security check, FBI, DHS, state um, departments, 
We have to get a biometry, fingerprints, iris scans, uh, medical clearances. There is like another uh, difficult step. If you have a little uh, health issue, you will be stopped. And then until that you get uh, fully recover, um, get cured and everything's like you will uh, start the process again. And the next step is rotation and travel arrangements will be arranged for you. Uh, you will be given a boarding pass, but those are not free. You will have to pay that when you get here, like the plane ticket cost. So here we are in the US. The federal uh, resettlement period in, in here is only 90 days. Oh, I mean, like the, the, um, the one, like the, pre the first, part that I mentioned, it does not have to do, you may probably wonder, it does not have to do with um, um, juvenile system or anything, but I really want you to know where do our parents are from and what education, what was their background, where like the youth are coming from and, and, and everything. Yes, get back here. Um, the federal resettlement period is only 90 days. After 90 days, you are, you are done. Um, the case, all the cases are closed, whether you're ready or not, you need to be independent. Um, at that time, like after 90 days, refugees, people are going to feel like overwhelmed, exhausted, confused um, because they do not know how to figure out their way in here. That time, no counseling, no therapy is like offered to them. Um, that time, they are often hard to recognize their mental illness or trauma during this time, this period. During that 90 days, um, when we first got here, we were so happy, you know, um, we thought this is paradise because when we were young, dad used to tell a story where if you are good, you will get to go to heaven. In heaven, there is going to be a big house. People are nice. People are like look great and foods are like a lot of foods. You, they are not buying, they are not selling, no war, no gun, no crime, like nothing. So it's just a peaceful. So we thought here, after we received a food stamp, we went to shop at No Frills. Um, in a store, store is like full of food. And it was just a little car. We didn't understand that car is like, like mean like money, you know? We like fruits, a lot of fruits, like we pick up the fruits and everything. Um, yeah, this is, that, this is paradise for us because like it just relates to everything that what that used to tell us a story in the Bible. Now after 90 days, no, this is not heaven. This is not paradise, I'm sorry. Um, this is what's like the stress and everything is starting here, you know. Um, we are, refugees are legal and they, um, they can work here and their status does not expire. They, they have the same right and allergy from the same government system as you as a citizen. If they do good, they will, they will be good. If they don't follow the rules or um, a violence, um, the laws, they will receive, they receive the same punishment as a US citizen. Um, even though they, we, we thought without proper education or knowledge of the, of the US law. So challenges and obstacle language barrier. Um, in the past, we do not have in, enough interpreter. Um, with our current, uh, with our refugee, we prefer interpreter instead of translation, sending out a letters to us, we may not, our parents may not be able to read and not reading um, letters, like we do not understand the, like the, what is going on. And for example, if they receive a letter from, from the court to attend their hearing, and if they do not know how to read that and not showing up to their hearing, it makes them like look disrespectful and the other way like we prefer um, home visit if you cannot communicate cannot reach out to us you show up to us uh, you don't have to make appointments to just show up um, if you are home we're just gonna let uh, we were just gonna let you in um, yeah no appointment is needed but when arrived to the house you might want to take off your shoes that is like another uh, um, important things, you know. And transportation, we do not feel comfortable with public transportation, riding a bus, ta taxi, uh, and Uber are like 
we feel you're scared because we do not know how to read the signs, uh, street sign, or communicate with the driver. And if we got lost, we just do not know how to get uh, our way back. And um, usually if our fa um, refugee family has a big family with one car and the person who works um, awfully take the car to, to work, leaving the other partner with the kids no right to go to appointments like doctor appointment, school appointment or anything. And the security and job, um, mostly our parents gonna work at me packing company because um, this company do not require like language skill, communication skill or education level or anything. So they were in at me packing company. Housing maintenance, we came from a bamboo um, house and now we are living like a two, three bedroom house, like with the carpet and everything. Sometimes we don't really know how to use the vacuum to clean our carpet or anything, you know. Assessing service and assessing um, healthcare, we were with the language barrier, we do not know how to um, find our wits, but if we know interpreter, one interpreter, we will rely on that interpreter to help us to connect to this service. Cultural barrier, I will. I'm gonna come back later on that one. Um, technology, it's another issue. Mm. Especially during the COVID times, you know, the parents don't know how to help their kids get into um, the school with the iPad or getting into the meeting with the Zoom. But we know how to use Facebook with uh, the help of our children. Um, but when we have, we have accounts, we will be active 24 seven. We do not know how to log off. Once we log off, uh, we have to create another account. Or if um, our phone got broke down, we have to uh, create another account. So, yeah. Um, with the language barrier, we don't feel comfortable calling 911. And, and the other thing, um, police, police is very uniform. Um, we came from a place where we feel like people with uniform has um, firearm, weapon, um, can do anything, can harm anything to us, so we don't feel comfortable like um, calling 911 or talking to the police because of the traumatized, you know. Easily to forget things when we were ner nervous. Um, I think me, I can communicate with um, English speaker. I think I'm doing all right, but one time I got pulled over and I just couldn't communicate with the police at all. I was like, no, I'm like lost everything. Um, parents unable to read and write um, because of like they, when they were young, they didn't receive a proper education and stuff. So they do not know how to read and write, even though it is in their native language. They may say yes or may sign a document that they do not really understand or even signing in an admission of guilt. Um, with our current refugee families, they were just trying to so everything's like get things done so that I can leave your office or you can leave um, me alone. But with our um, African refugee community, I see that's like they we have a little hesitates. Like what what am I signing for? They will question me. Um, they don't like not really. If they don't really understand, they won't sign. So come on, uh, come on, I'm fam uh, familiar with loss, hurting, and fishing. Um. We were just gonna hunt if we see the score in the park. We we do not know if it's like allowed or not, like catching the fish. We do not know like what many fish, how many fish that we need to catch. Like if we we have a good fishy, then we're just gonna catch everything, you know. And that is not right. Truancy, um, back home, going the kids. Refugee can be, if you wanna go to school, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It is not a lot. And then after a parent sending you to the school, it's depend on the teacher hands, like you are in the teacher hand, to teacher hand. The teacher can spend, the teacher can discipline, the teacher can teach, the teacher can give you consequence, anything they want, they do not need to give you permission. But here, if you miss more than 20 days, you will get a chart, a truancy chart, and you have to present yourself into the in front of the judge and stuff, you know? Child supervision guideline. We have a big family. Usually, the mom's gonna rely on older sister. Sometimes they are not like at the right age to taking care of the younger sister or brother, but they will rely on that. 
gambling and lottery is hitting us hard, um, especially during this time, um, especially as lot machines, you know, when they drop the money, um, like at times the lot 20, I like 10, 20, 20. And if you keep on doing that, you will lose a lot of money um, or what is called like scratch tickets, lottery, scratch tickets. Like it is so addictive, uh, addictive, you know, when you start, it is hard to stop. Um, because of like not enough and this gambling leader leading them to a domestic violence. And when domestic violence occur in the house, they don't really like share or anything, ask for help or anything. Let's say if dads come home beating mom, mom was just gonna keep quiet. The kid's gonna um, see everything, um, win at everything, but mom won't share anything because if mom asks for help and if dads get into a trouble or anything, um, that can, cannot go to work and leaving mom without like, no one's gonna help her with the bills. Like it's gonna be even worse. And they will just wait until like they cannot handle it anymore and then they will ask for help. Traffic violation in car seats, seat belt. Um, refugee, back home we don't have car. And if we have car, like 10, 20 people it's gonna jump into that cars, you know? But we cannot do that in here. And uh, car seats, I see that usually we're just gonna throw our car seat in the car without book up properly. We're just gonna like, okay, if the police see there is car seat in there, but if police really investigate, it's not properly done. Um, minor in possessions contributes, contributing to delinquency of minor. Um, back home, there is no rule like 18 and above, 21 and above are, I'm not allowed to dream or anything. Uh, we will sit together with the family and um, have, if we have a drink, we'll give passes to a little minor and then have a sip and then this is not allowed. And we, I think we carry the habits until here and we're not allowed to do that in here. So no legal system in the camp. We don't have a lawyer. We don't have a job. We don't have a prosecutor or anything. And if you get caught, we usually, um, Physical punishment is like the way. Um, they don't need to ask your permissions for your mom or dad or anything. No mental health issues are considered and counseling does not really exist in the camp. No legal assistance resources, social ser service, legal defense organization does not really exist in here. But we do have a camp leader. We do have a security guard. We don't have police or anything in the camp. No group homes like a keep who are in probation, who are in diversion. There is no group home, no rehab program, no probation officer, no therapist or anything. The treatment for us is a stick. Whether <laughs> if you're not good, you don't get probation to recorrect to recorrect your behavior. But stick is gonna be the one that stick and you will get spanked, and that is the only way to recorrect your behavior, you know. Um because of that, like the, um, the refugee community going through all this like cultural barrier, like um, conflicts with the law and everything, I got hired um, in 2016 to work with the probation diversion kids. And my job is to support, um, assist, um, communicate and connect children, uh, family during probation diversions and with the probation diversion uh, staff. Um, I provide cultural competence service for refugee youth and family and help parents to understand the process of ju juvenile justice and help them complete the requirements. Because if they do not complete the requirements, um, their record cannot be sealed like we have their record. It can affect them in the future. And we really want parents to understand that. And how support instruct refugee parents on how the school system works in, um, and the consequence in here. Back home, we leave everything into the teacher hand when the, the our kids arrive into the school. But in here, we, we prefer like parents, school and the kids work together for their like academy for their educations, you know, and we want parents to understand that part. And I advocate for refugee community who speak the language and understand the provide education to both children and parents. Um, in 
I was doing a part time like two years for that one. And in 2019, um, they have created a new program called Runaway Prevention Program. I was very excited to take that position because I think OPD has received the increased number of missing Korean youth and they want to prevent that. Um, me, I thought with the background um, helping probation and diversion, I think I can do the job. Um, I was very excited, as I said, like mm, um, taking this position. And I started on 2019, January. I received my first refer and then made a home visit to the, the family. Um, the moment when I opened the door, they were like, oh, I'm so glad you guys are, you are here. Please remove my kids away. Please take my, my, my kid with you. He's not, he's not listening. He's not um, going to school. He's running out at night. He's doing track. His mom's going to lay, lay out like a lot of problem that the youth have. I was trying to calm mom down and then let's set up a plan and everything, no? I see that kids, um, the youth, the runaway youth, some of the youths like having the same behavior as like the kids in the probation or um, probation on diversion, but they just do not receive help. Um, or they are too smart, they don't get caught, so they don't like, they don't receive help. And then after a little while, like a week or two, we keep receiving the refer. And then I, every time when I made a visit, moms want me to, parents want me to remove the child. And I keep, I came back and I was wondering if I'm in the right place. Is it too late to quit this job? I, because I don't have confidence anymore, you know. Um, I do not know what to do. I cannot report them to probation officer. I cannot ask help for a diversion officer. It was just me alone. So I'm lack of self-confidence. Um, it was first we were only gonna start that for our refugee um, Korean community, but later on we also re received um, refer from Bhutanese, um, Sudanese, and we see that it was not only refugee uh, Korean community that's needing this help. So, like the more we work with the, the kids, and we see that there is a real confusion in the home due to the parents heavily relying on English speaking children for interpreter translation and transportation um, to access other service. And parent, parents pursuing material that children do not deserve. For example, like, mom, I don't, I don't have a car to go to school. I don't have a right to go to school. Mom's gonna get them a car. Mom, I need phone to work on my homework. Mom's gonna get it, them a phone. And the other reason mom's trying to get at them because mom feel like they own them back home. They cannot provide them those. Um, that is when they were like getting them things, the fancy things, you know, their phones like way better than us, like the latest model and everything. So um, the kids and even like, having the children monitor their bank accounts, keep track of their bills. Like one time I was, and when I was working with the school, a youth came back to me and asking me to, to keep 2,400 bills, like $100 bill. I was like, where did you get this money? I was like, she was doing something that like bring the cash. She was like, no, no, this is the money for my mom to pay the bills. Like, why don't you have this? She can I keep in mom? Can I keep in the home because dad's gonna steal that? And then I call mom. Yeah, mom said like I have her um to taking care of the money so that she can pay the bills like this afternoon. Then I that was a big amount of money, so I do not want to keep it. I send it to the um administrators and she helped me take care of the, the bills. See at uh, some time, um the the kids like taking advantage of mom parents because they think like the their education is higher they know how to speak english mom does not have education moms cannot taking care of um their themselves without the support of like the children help um it's just like children not feel like they are rushed they rush into become adults and they don't want to go to school they just want to work and um start having the money and everything you know and parents are able to give advice, guide due to the culture and difference and familiar system and law. Lack of appropriate disciplines, parents will to not to do, not to physically discipline, but not really um, teach them, like nobody teach them like what is the alternative with lack of parenting skill. 
Um, yes, um, conflict between parents and children, lack of and uh, parents what lack of under understanding appropriate rules, expectation, self safe boundary in their relationship with their children, and lack of understanding the law and culture expectation here in the U.S. I mean in the Nebraska, the state to protect their children. And lack of understanding age appropriate expectation, discipline, strategy for their children to be able to identify alternative to physical discipline. And then the, there is language barrier occur in, in between parents and mom because parents speak native language, children start speaking English. Sometimes they pretend like they do not understand moms or they, they don't really understand moms, you know. Um, I have a kid in a foster mom um, place. She, every time when she is going to have a visit, she will text moms like, mom, not a picture that she wants mom to buy. And mom's going to go to the store and looking for the picture and buy that. And she keep on doing that over and over again. And mom feel like mm, she's always, my daughter is always asking that stuff for me. Why, why don't she ask me like, how do I feel like I'm single mom? How, what do, how do I do at work? Like, my job is not easy. I'm like working at a packing company and standing eight to 10 hours. It's not easy, but she never cared about my feeling, but asking a lot of things. And when we have a meeting, it appears that the girls want to check on mom, but she doesn't know how to text um, in Korean. Or if she texts that in English, mom doesn't know how to read and write. A mom doesn't know how to read. That is why she is using Imagine like picture to ask mom so we we solve the problem like if you want if you want to communicate if you want to know mom's feeling just should send her like emoji pictures like a heart like kissing and uh, mom's gonna understand that and cultural difference parents keep their culture children are being americans now children is gonna come to me and say like i don't have food i don't have food at home i don't have anything to eat well, it doesn't mean that they don't have anything to eat. They have rice and fish and everything, but they don't have the food that they eat, like hamburger or pizza. So like, if you don't really um, ask them, you probably think that mom does not provide for them, but mom does have um, um, their food, food, off, food, food in the refrigerator, but it just doesn't have the one that they like. And generation gap old generation and younger generation. Refugee families, some of our parents like gonna be in age 40, 50 and having their youngest children in age like 12, 12 13 year, years old. There is like a big gap age and probably the 40, 50 parents don't really understand their this generation's like life. Even myself, like I have a sister and 10 years apart, apart. I don't really understand her life too. When we shop, she always have to go to mall. Me, I can just like pick up anything and then wear it. But her, she has to have, it has to be a brand name. Like she has to be vet and um, all stars and everything. I'm like, those are expensive. Just get the one in the warmer. It's so cheap and they cover your feet and everything. You should be fine. <laughs> So like sometimes we don't really understand this generation life and refugee parents does the same thing too. And we see that an engagement and evolve in children academy. Again, they don't feel with um, language barrier. They don't feel with no education background. They don't feel like confidence going to see the teachers uh, unless you really push them, you know? And family environment surrounding. Uh, kids who are in probation, I see like they will get a treatment, um, go to stay in the shelter for six to ten, uh, six to a year, but they, they will come back. At the first couple of weeks, they will do well, but coming back in the same environment, seeing the same peers, hanging out the same area, they will go back to the same situation again. You know? And family time. Family time, I'm often in our parents um, do not really check on their kids or very like have a little time to check on their kids. Like kids gonna go to the school in the, in, in the morning, the teacher's gonna be greeting them like, how are you doing? How do you feel? Like if they have a bad day, the, kid, the teacher's gonna sit with them, talk to them and then confront them. 
But with our parents, we will wait until like, if our kids are not feeling well, they will come and tell us. We will wait until the kids are telling us. But the kids here adapting um, culture here, they want parents to approach them, not waiting, not them to come and approach them. So there is like complete, you know, and parenting skill. Parent, not like, I think every parenting skills are right, right? But there is not wrong, but it just, a uh, different culture, different like style, American parenting skill and then refugee parenting skill. It just like a little different. With the, the complete between cultural with the language barrier. And um, I was thinking like with prevention, pro uh, with prevention program, we should have a mentor because this youth have, um, they have a good role model, they have home, um, someone that who works really hard, they can look up to them, but they don't really have anybody that who has a, a higher education that they can look up or who can influence them to pursue a higher education. So I was um, came, coming back to my office and talking to my leader team to create a male mentor because we receive a lot of runaway youth boy so this male mentor is going to be working with the boys and trying to encourage them to go to school, to pursue higher education. These kids, this youth is going to involve with the gangs, like using drugs, keeping school and um, using weapon and everything. We, want, we really want to show them it's like, you can have fun, but there is other way to have fun, not only like hanging out with the kids, you know, you can go to swimming, you can go together, you can go to the theaters um, when you are doing great, and you can go to skating. And this is where our mentor, um, this the person in the picture is like, um, create, like trying to create every, the plans and to influence this youth. And they really like it. The picture is like one of the friends like birthday and they celebrate that together. Um, moms do not really celebrate their birthday and they feel like mom doesn't really care that. Parents do not really care that. But it doesn't mean that parents do not really care that parents don't. Culturally, we don't really celebrate the birthday and the other things like mom might not remember their birthday. Even mom's birthday, she might not remember herself birthday, you know. Mm -hmm. And also like we don't really um, celebrate the Halloween, but for our family time, I asked moms like to go get a little pumpkin. Uh, this pumpkin is not for cook, but for the cravings, like um, they sit together and then um, draw craft together and then put the, the candy in the basket. Happy Halloween, take two or three candies, I think. Um, thank you. And the left pic right picture, it's like um, a girl that I show her how to cook. Um, um, she, she doesn't like current foods, I guess, of traditional food. Um, but I asked her like, what is her favorite one? Uh, we went to shop together and we, we came back and cooked together, show her how to cook together. And mom was the one who captured our pictures in the back. Mental health awareness. Mental health, um, we don't really have like, Mental <coughs> mental health is not does not really exist in in our culture. When you see mental refer, you will probably translate. It sounds like a crazy, you know. So we cannot really accept that. But it does really um there like one time I in two thousand nineteen I think I went to visit a father, um a family a father who has a PTSD. He will go to work during the day. He was just going to be like fine and normal working and everything. And after work, he would call, come home and then drink to, to go to sleep. And when we talk to wife, the wife still like he always have to drink uh, in order to, for him to fall into sleep. If he does not drink, he cannot go to sleep. And when he sleep, he was just going to scream, like kicking around. Like um, it, it, was, it is scary things, you know. And then we see that's like, he needs some help. We were going to take him to the doctor, but he said, no, he cannot, he doesn't want to. Um, because he thinks like, he remember how to go to work. He brought um, the money home to support his family. So for us, as long as we remember how to put on our clothing, how to eat rice, how to go to work, I think we are consider our like, 
normal person. Um, we do not have any mental issue, but deeply we, we do like um, they, they did not have an easy life before coming here in the US. And the symptom is, is there, you know. And refugees are often unaware of extent of healthcare service available in the US, let alone how to na na navigate an asset to the program. And healthcare costs could be expensive. They don't really like to go to the doctor because like copay, they have had to, um, and then one time is not done, there's like follow up, like two months follow up, three months follow up, and we have to miss the work and everything. Um, so that's why like paying the percentage of um, medical costs, it's just a lot for them. Um, back home, it's like you just go to the clinic, you get a Tylenol, and then you are done. It's like no follow-up or anything, so it's easy. And the other things, like I have one probation youth um, who want to go to an ER. At that time, mom was at work. And I asked moms, like, if you can take her to the doctor, because if I, if I take her to the doctor, um, they will still have to get, get a permission from moms anyway. So, and it was like um, toward the end of the day where moms um, almost finished with her shift. And she said she can wait until a mom gets home. So mom was like, mom does not really trust her. It's like she thinks the daughter is just trying to get her extra work, like, being like a dramatic queen um she doesn't want to take her to the 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 doctor while riding together with but i keep pushing moms you know you really need to take her to the doctor she really needs to go to the er while riding with mom um mom's like i think lecturing her a lot and yelling her a lot as she she has the thought that she wants to kill herself and then after mom dropped her off mom came back mom talked to me like and now she wants to kill herself. She said that. It's like, I'm so done with her. Well, after when I received the word, like killing herself, it is so deep um, for me, you know? And uh, I, I hang up on mom and then call her. And then I talk to her slowly. She admitted to me that she wants to kill herself. But things that are stopping her not to do that's because of her mom, because of her family. And she, she did not have any plan or anything. So after talking to her a while, she was in Emmanuel. So I told her to talk to the doctor because you are in the right place and those people can help you um, a lot. Well, she said she was gonna do that. And after I talked to her, I hang up um, with her. I called mom's back and then I was like, your, your, your daughter really wants to kill herself. You really, need, you really need to take this as a serious matter. Otherwise you are going to lose your daughter. It is time to lower your ego. It is time to kiss her, hug her, and tell her it's like to that you care her. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't hurt your pride or anything. Just try that. You are going to have her like forever. Forever. It's gonna make her happy that she knows that her mom's care her. You know that um, she didn't have a plan to kill herself because she thought about you. And after that, mom's like took a little moment. I think she got into a tears and then like later on, I heard that like they were like doing a TV together. It was, it was a nice thing too. <laughs> um, yeah, we, unlike migrants, refugees have no choice but to leave their countries, you know, not the same as people who might immigrate here to obtain a better job or to learn English. We just want to be in a safer place. Consideration, mental emotion, um, Issues such as trauma, PTSD, adjusting, adapting to a new society, culture, basic needs must be met before languages, um, acquisitions. Most refugees receive no formal education or illiterate. In their own native language, refugees are in survivor mood. Um, we are often like, when I go around, I re often receive these comments like, oh, you are so lucky to get to be here in the US, coming from a refugee camp. Giving me that comment, I think I can accept that. I'm so lucky to get to be here um, in the US um, compared to a refugee camp. But if you are giving that comment to my a person who is my mom age or my parents age or, or a little less 30, 40, 50, 60, do you think that they are lucky? They came here without knowing like anything, without knowing culture, unable to speak English or 
um, reading or writing or doesn't know how to write their own bills. Um, and they will see their kids have picking up the wrong way, uh, having behavior issues, but there is not much they can do just watching their, their kids, like talking to them. But other than that, they cannot do anything and the kids won't listen to them and they are here from their kids' future. Um, they are going to lose their future. And so these people in 10, 20 years gonna lose their culture, their language. Do you think that they are lucky? I don't think that they are lucky. That is why it's like a lot of our refugee parents are giving up on American dreams. Um, it's sure they will just leave everything behind and go back and then uh, live their normal life in the camp. Uh, not in the camp. They cannot go back in the camp, but like in Thailand, uh, working their daily life or they will commit a suicide. Um, you may questions like, why don't they learn English? If, if they are going through a lot of problems and everything. Learning English is not easy. Learning English is not easy. Let's just start with one word, for example. The word go, what is the past tense of go? It's went, totally different like words. For my language, the word go means le. Past tense, le. Future tense, the le, only one word. And now we are only speaking to tense like past tense and present tense. There is like future tense, like part participant, like a lot of tense, you know, with English language. I just got lost. It's not easy. And asking a parent to learn English, the one who has never touched a pen, never flick a page, never, like have never been to school with PTSD, with depression disorder, um, with cultural shock, with work and everything in here. I'm not saying that's like they cannot do, they can, they will go to school and learn, but they will learn now, probably forget in a little bit. Us, if we can, if we do not know how to pronounce a word, we're just gonna write down in our language and then go back and reread that in our language. But with who, a person who has never been to school cannot write down the pronunciation and then cannot go back and then reread that. So it is like a, a hard for, for them. They can speak English here and there, but broken English, you know, but unable to communicate with probation officer, unable to communicate with the teacher or um, service provider or with English speaker or anything. So I would say working with in working with the refugee parents, it's not easy. It takes you a lot of efforts um, and uh, and energy. But with us working together, I think we will make it one day. Um, pretty much that's it. I will tell you. I think um, this is my contact information. I was just gonna stop here. I don't really feel like don't really like public speaking but when I start it is just hard for me to stop I was just gonna pause here and open up for a question and answer um here is my contact information um the first one is Elizabeth Ajungo working with my supervisor working with a refugee from Africa and the second one's, one is Aruna Dampa um she is working with a refugee from Nepali Bhutanese community and the other one is me working with a current um, refugee or a refugee from Burma. Um, if you have any questions relate to like the population that you're working with, just send us a question. I may not have all of the answer for you today, but like I'm gonna try my best to answer um, your questions. Thank you. All right. Well, really appreciate that, Rosie. My name is Rodney Evans. I am also one of the uh, Red Coach heirs working with LaDonna. Uh, definitely wanted to uplift Rosie and her insight and experience and the great work that she's doing working with the refugees population. Um, what we'll do is we'll gather all the questions together and just kind of send them to you, Rosie, and uh, maybe come back on, on, on the back end and, and answers, get some of those answers to the questions. Um, um, again, want to thank everybody for your time. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and put those five questions on the survey of if you can take, just take a quick moment to uh, answer those questions. That would be great. Also want to remind everybody, if you haven't done so already, to uh, download that NJJ app for next month's training, where we will feature uh, Patrick Taylor, uh, Director of Development with uh, Metro Area Services. Uh, he will be speaking on biases and embraced uh, conditioning and how they contribute to dis disparities for people of color. And that will be April 28th. Um, so if you haven't done so, go ahead and download that. Uh, again, wanted to thank everybody for your time today. And... Uh, Appreciate you tuning in.